I bought the saloon version of this kit, Admiral Saloon, but it turns out that it's a later um, release than the first one, which was the Cabriolet, and I actually think I prefer to do it as a soft top. In the kit, I get this extra part, which is the hard top. Now, fortunately, the instructions for the original soft top version are on Scalemates. So I've been able to get download those instructions, compare them with these, and guess what? All the parts I need for the top, soft top version are included in the kit. Here's the soft top. So there's very little difference. Um, there is a different boot piece, um, which we've got in the kit. Let's see if I can um, show you that. There we go, different boot piece um, for this to, to mount onto, and there's a different um, column for between the um, doors and different glazing. But we've got all of those parts in the kit. So I'm gonna go with a soft top version, which I think is gonna look quite cool, um, rather than the hard top version. Um, so nice and easy. I just have to cross-reference the instructions at every step and make sure that everything is the same. Chassis, wheels, tires, all built up. Um, so I haven't done the engine block yet because what I want to do is just see how important the engine is to this because it might be a time saving for me not to build the engine and I can keep that for something else at some other point. Um, so that really brings me on to building up the front and rear seats. So that's the next job. The fit of this is um, a little bit slack, shall we say. So um, I feel like once we've got these two parts glued together, We'll put it straight into the bulkhead there and that'll help keep everything in place. But you can see I've got a few gaps and a bit of clean up to do, so it's not going to be easy. Cleaned up the um, rear section of the body and the boot lid. And when you glue them together, we're going to have a big gap in the hinge. But I do have the hinges on here and these these look not bad at all so I'm going to try and carefully remove them uh, to replace that if I can't do that then what we'll do is we'll fill that um, and and sculpt a little hinge into it maybe some micro mesh just to smooth my finish I'm not happy with it in some places the doors particularly have not come out um, particularly well so I'm just rubbing it down going through the micro mesh uh, different grades uh, until we've got it nice and smooth again then think we'll reapply the paint and the varnish all the leather parts need a little bit of a wash just to bring out that detail a little bit um, and we're going to use um, a dark brown for that 
Um, this we can further thin down with a little bit of enamel thinners. Um, so we've got plenty of control over this. Uh, this is a staff car, so it'll be well maintained. So I don't want it to look dirty. I just want to uh, bring a little bit of definition. All my leather items now highlighted, what we're going to do is give them a satin varnish um, and seal it all up and then we can get it in the car. A little bit of blue tack under the palette, keeps it on an angle, helps you collect it in one area, slows down the drying time. You can see by putting the varnish on, what we're doing is just deepening the colour and the, the matte effect that you get from the panel liner um, gets uh, toned in to the rest of the piece so it all looks keyed and as it should be, unified. So ahead of painting the chrome on the various glass places, we have um, masked them all off and then we're going to just paint everything with a black primer which is going to allow me to um, get a nice luster behind the, the chrome when we paint it and it dries really quickly so um, we'll put some black primer down and then we can paint it in with our um, chrome metal colour that we've used throughout the build.
So at this point in the build I decided to just test fit the um, soft top roof. And that's when we found a problem. So the roof doesn't fit. <laughs> It doesn't fit by about two and a half millimetres and the the model was too fragile to force the issue. Um, but I suspect we might have made it fit if it hadn't been all painted up and built up. But that's not ideal, is it, that it doesn't fit. Um, it also didn't fit across the width at the back either. So if it had the original version of the kit with the soft top in, I could have at this point jumped onto the folded down version um, which in hindsight would show off the inside of the car um, really nicely but I didn't have that option so I'm going to have to scratch build one and I didn't have time to do that within the confines of building this within the month of February so when we come to put it on the diorama we'll have a look at scratch building a soft top and effectively my build was done so this is me calling the build complete and this is as far as we got uh, just before the end of February. Um, I would have had time to finish the roof had it fitted but uh, it just wasn't to be. So at some point we will scratch build uh, a, a new roof for the back. In the meantime I was relatively happy with how this came out. I cut a few corners, I was rushing because of time and it does show a little bit in the model. Now the model itself builds up um, into a very nice representation of the Admiral um, Opal Admiral from 1937. From what I could see in my research pic pictures, it was pretty accurate. Um, I'd gone with black because it ultimately will be used as um, a staff car. Um, but the build wasn't without one or two issues. Um, a little bit unusual for ICM, whether this is one of their older kits... Um, I, yeah, I don't think so. But anyway, let's talk about that. Well, uh, the number plate decals actually came from an old Hobby Boss um, decal sheet that was left over from a previous build. Uh, and each number was individual and uh, uh, as a decal and I had to construct it myself. Um, and that's because the decals in the kit, as soon as they hit the water, just fragmented into lots and lots of little parts and and there was no way it was going to get put back together um, but that wasn't the only issue i had with decals and generally the decal sheet i had was completely ruined and not particularly well printed either i think this was the um, biggest issue in the kit overall uh, was the poor decals and um, you can see in this picture of the dashboard that they they fragmented and I had to put them together but they were nowhere near as bad as the number plates so I was fortunate enough to get away with them uh, but they don't look perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I was happy with my solution taking the hinges from the other uh, moulded boot and um, putting them on here it saved me a load of time with filling and sculpting milliput um, and they turned out okay and it all looked great in the end um, and the boots got some nice detail on with the separate ha um, handle and what have you and in this instance I could have had it open as well if I'd wanted but would have had to scratch build an interior line in. It's also not obvious where the spare wheel would have been so I suspect that would have been perhaps inside the boot as well so a little bit of research needed if you're going to open up the boot and you'd have to source a spare wheel and do some scratch building. Um, now I had two options for the interior upholstery. Um, I could go with the leather, which I ultimately went with, or I could have gone with um, a grey uh, material. Uh, and at first I was thinking about going with the grey material, but then I saw um, a photograph of, albeit a restored um, vehicle and it had exactly that colour in and it looks stunning so I ended up going with that and yeah it looks really good and it breaks up all the black um, really nicely and it looked refined and in some way a little bit sporty so as this was Opal's top of the range car at the time it all tied in lovely. 
The decals for the uh, hubcaps and for the um, chrome trim along the side of the uh, front of the car there were a nice touch. I seem to get away with um, the decals staying in one piece for the hubcaps, um, but I had to piece it together for um, the chrome plate. So they're not necessarily <laughs> in the order they were on the decal sheet, but they look fine. Um, so little red dashes. Um, uh, I'm guessing if you scaled them up, they probably said something but uh, like Admiral or something like that, but not recognisable at this scale. Whereas the hubcaps definitely say Opal across them. The chrome radiator, like much of the trim on this car, was actually done with a silver paint pen uh, and it made life a lot easier. Um, although it did have to go back and touch up once or twice, um, it, you'd not quite got the precision that you have with a paintbrush. Having said that, it did speed up the process massively, so all in all, it was a good solution for this. Um, there's quite a bit of chrome on the vehicle one way or another um, and I thought it looked really nice um, under a, a, a varnish but um, the indicator lights or extra driving lights or whatever they are, uh, they're not indicators because it's got flappers, um, the, the chrome has struggled there so I need to go back and revisit that but we painted the back of that clear part white which seemed to be in keeping with what I could see on restored vehicles. So I've not weathered the vehicle at all really other than to put some shadow into the seats because ultimately this is going on a diorama and I don't know how I want it to be at, at this moment in time. So even the tyres have been left alone at this point. Um, but I, it, the finished look of the, of the vehicle is nice and detailed. You can see the little wipers there. They're not photo etch. They're plastic and, and really finely done. So as long as you're careful with them, they come together really well. The uh, windows, um, they got all masked off and painted and that process um, worked really well and they fit really well. So again, no real issues with the fit of the kit throughout, except for maybe the doors a little bit. So let's talk about that. In terms of the actual construction and fit of the, of the model, the biggest issue um, was the doors. I really struggled with the doors and they're still not perfectly right. Um, I, when you build up the vehicle, uh, building up the boot and the, the bonnet and, and uh, front mud guards separately. And when you finish doing that, you then add the seats uh, and then you add the, uh, the doors. And the problem was, to, if you get the trim level, the, um, the door pops out at the bottom and then is angled in at the top. And if you get the door to sit nicely at the bottom, then the trim is about half a millimetre, not in line with the rest of the trim on the body. So I ended up making the best compromise I could with a little bit of misalignment on the trim and a little bit of misalignment on the, on the door edges, um, but generally looking okay. But if you look really hard, you will see it's not quite lined up. Um, so that was a little bit disappointing, but the rest of it went together um, really nicely. Um, the only part of the build that I can't comment on is the engine because I decided to omit it to save some time. But at arm's length, she looks great. And I have to say, I really enjoyed the build. And um, most of it, like I say, came together really nicely. I think um, highlights of the kit are the tyres. They're made up of five layers of plastic rings, one for each um, different tread. Um, and that looks really nice and individual. And they certainly are some of the best um, tyres you can you can build up from a, from a kit point of view. Certainly better than the vinyl tyres that they sometimes use um, in some of their kits. So um, yeah, I felt I felt that um, in the main it was really nice and captured the vehicle pretty well. So that's it for this video. Um, it's just a short video to show you how it all went together. Um, I enjoyed the small scale for a small month uh, car build. It's the second time I've done it. 
Um, it did put me under a little bit of pressure uh, and we ended up cutting a few corners, but all in all, it came together well and I'm happy with it. So thank you for looking in. You take care and enjoy your modelling and I will see you very, very soon.